c'est-à-dire euh, les gens qui ramassent les, les, les poubelles, qui s'occupent des transports, qui s'occupent des qui travaillent dans les magasins, etc. Okay, so there's a huge debate going on about the salaries and the conditions, the working conditions for people in in the in in medical profession, in healthcare, but also all the other uh, key workers such as um, people who are dealing with um, sanitization, people who are emptying bins, people who are dealing with transport and, 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 and all, all the other essential services to society. Et donc, euh, bon, maintenant, on est dans une situation, euh, évidemment, à la sortie de ça, euh, parce qu'en France, aujourd'hui, c'est presque terminé, hein, le, le coronavirus, l'épidémie est presque terminée. Euh, mais par contre, la crise économique, elle, elle est là. So, so the, the immediate health crisis around the coronavirus is practically finished, but all the economic consequences are still looming heavily over society. Donc là on annonce par exemple euh, une baisse du produit intérieur brut, enfin une récession de, 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 de 11 à 14 euh, et le, le ministre de l'industrie annonce qu'il enfin, pré, prévoit 800 000 chômeurs euh, en plus dans les mois à venir. Okay, so the, 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 the level of unemployment is expected to go up. The economy is expected to fall by about 14%. There's a huge overhang of all the economic consequences of the epidemic. Et donc, ce à quoi on, ce, ce on s'attend, c'est euh, évidemment à, des, à, à de grandes luttes sur, sur la question de l'emploi, euh, contre les licenciements, parce qu'il va y avoir des fermetures d'entreprises. Euh, et c'est à ça qu'on essaye de préparer euh, euh, comment dire, le, le milieu qu'on peut essayer d'influencer. De, 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 okay, so, so there's a, a huge um, movement developing around the question of employment, unemployment and um, security of employment. Et donc euh, par rapport à ça, euh, euh, nous ce qu'on essaye de défendre comme perspective, c'est la la garantie de l'emploi, euh, l'entrée de l'État dans, le dans le capital des entreprises qui devraient être euh, aidées euh, et le, le contrôle ouvrier, évidemment, sur, euh, sur ces entreprises-là. And, and there's pressure for the, the re-entry of the state into the enterprises that have been privatized and with that, um, the control of the working class over production. Alors, à, à, à tout ça s'ajoute un autre, un autre problème spécifique. Alors, ce que je viens de dire, ce n'est pas spécifique à la France. Ça vaut pour tous les pays qui sont touchés. Par contre, en France, on a en plus un problème qui est un problème de liberté publique puisqu'il y a une répression de l'État qui est extrêmement violente aujourd'hui. Um, so, so, a lot of those things are, are, are matters that affect not just France, but, but all the countries that, that have been affected by the corona epidemic. But in France, the, in addition to that, there's a, a problem of, of, of a huge attempt by the forces of the state to repress public liberties. Uh... Donc voilà, alors ça, ça crée donc euh, je, euh, une, euh, une ébullition politique euh, dans, le, dans le pays. Et puis, euh, la montée de courants politiques qu'on pourrait appeler euh, souverainistes. En anglais, ce serait euh, souverainiste. Euh, je ne sais pas comment le traduire. Je suis désolé, Raymond. I did this, this... There's noise here in my area, and I'm, I didn't catch that. Uh, I, I will try in English. I, I said that uh, uh, there is a, a, a lot, a kind of uh, political radicalization about, uh, around the idea of, uh, of national sovereignty. And uh, you have a lot of different uh, current and initiatives who, who develop uh, 
programs around the, the, the idea of, uh, of the, the defense of the or the, the, the reconquest of the French national uh, sovereignty. And et le, le, le problème évidemment que ça pose, uh, d'une part, c'est la question de l'extrême droite et des, des liens avec l'extrême droite. The, and, and the, this poses the problem of the rise of the extreme right as well. Puisque donc nous, on a eu à la dernière élection présidentielle, hein, l'extrême droite a fait 34% au deuxième tour, hein, c'est considérable. Hein. Um, so, uh, as comrades probably know, in the last presidential election, the extreme right got 34%, which is very significant. Et donc, nous, ce qu'on essaye de, de faire, c'est euh, euh, à la fois de participer euh, à ce mouvement de revendication et s'inscrire dans ce courant euh, pour la souveraineté populaire, mais en même temps de développer un programme socialiste. So um, we're attempting to be involved in this um, development of um, this movement with all its demands for social justice and at the same time develop a socialist program. Um, voilà, et donc là, dans les, dans les prochains jours, euh, nous allons publier un document euh, qui, va, qui porte sur cette question-là et qui essaye de faire le... Le, le lien euh, entre les revendications immédiates et puis une, une perspective euh, socialiste. Ok, so we're, we're hoping in the next few days to publish a, a document that explains the link between these immediate demands that, that come out of the coronavirus crisis and the, the importance of the development of a socialist program. Alors ça, ça, peut, paraître, ça peut paraître banal, Uh, mais uh, en réalité, uh, personne, ne le, personne ne le fait aujourd'hui. Et ce qui domine sur le plan des idées, ce qui domine la gauche française, c'est plutôt des idées uh, uh, écologiques, uh, keynésiennes, uh, de réforme du système, etc. Ok, so, I mean, it, it seems sort of fairly basic, but, but at the moment, it, amongst the, the range of sort of tendencies on the left in France, Nobody is actually making this link and, um, you know, expressing explicitly a socialist program coming out of this. Je sais pas, j'ai peut-être été trop long, mais s'il y a des questions, où je passe la parole peut-être aux autres camarades français. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, so I think you've, you're saying you're finished really there, Raymond. Is that right? You don't want to speak too long because you want to give time for the other comrades. Okay, well, um, thanks, Raymond. Um, Olivier, you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Uh, do you see me? Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> Salut, Salut. Um, yes, to, to introduce me, um, I am a member of the editorial board of a Bert, electronic bulletin named uh, Argument pour la lutte sociale, appelutsoc.org on the internet. Uh, before, uh, before 2017, we were in the same organization with Raymond and uh, we, we had uh, some, uh, and we have still some uh, differences. So we we separate, we go on separated ways, but we are still uh, friends, and uh, I like to have a beer with them. No, <laughs> no fear about this. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, uh, in the, uh, so in the, uh, I will start uh, by saying I, I'm not happy to be here tonight because tonight in France it is the Fête de la Musique musical festival an institution created by uh, Jack Lang, uh, the Ministry of Culture for François Mitterrand in 1981. So tonight, in everywhere in France, there are uh, music at all, every corner. Uh, however, in Nantes, uh, and all in the, in all, as in all the department of Loire Atlantic, which surrounds this city, there will not be the festival. The prefect of police prohibited all demonstrations on the public way. Why? Because a year ago, during the same party, the police force violently dispersed a wild party 
who sound systems were playing antique harp music. They gathered dozens of people on this occasion and they pushed into the river, the Loire, several people, including, including a young innocent man who came for music and party that drowned. Until now, his body is missing. The cop, the cops have his days on their conscience and the authorities do not want this day to be remembered with force. So the prefect puts all the whole city, the whole department under curfew regime. Since the protest against the labor law in 2016, more and more demonstrations have been attacked by the police. Demonstration, demonstrators are gassed, club or victim of flashball fire. Processions are kettled, uh, packed, and then the cops uh, are firing grenades, tear gas grenades. With the mobilization of the yellow vest from uh, November, this 17 November on uh, 2018, until the summer of the next year, the repression went crescendo during the two months and during the two months of December and uh, January during the movement against the Macron uh, pension bill, uh, it was the same. Many union processions were, uh, were attacked. Uh, many uni union representatives uh, suffered disciplinary attacks from their company management at RTP, SNCF, post office, education, and so on. During the confinement, some people had hung anti-Macron banners on the balconies. The cops uh, came to the home and uh, legal proceedings were initiating against th these people. Compare that with the sign of free speech in UK when people put up electoral election signs or banners on the front of the, the home. Uh, this sign, this level of repression is a sign of the weakness of Macron, who still does not have a party. And having, having a party is the necessity for any president in France. So Macron relies on the deep state in the one hand, including uh, police and prefects, and crunches from the LR with the ex uh, former UMP uh, right party and from a uh, segment, big segment from the Socialist Party. The fact that Edouard Philippe has been prime minister for three years it is in the election, it is as if Alain Juppé has been in power since the election of Macron. In the last municipal elections, the first round which uh, took place before the confinement and the second round uh, will take place uh, next weekend. Uh, Macron's party arrives everywhere behind the right and behind what remains of the left. Where local left or, or environmental lists threaten all positions of the right, example in Marseille or Toulouse, we are witnessing regroup, regroupings between LR and uh, Macron party parties with name En Marche. Macron was chosen by the upper fraction of French capital and he chose a cost killer to come to raid a company. He managed to get elected on the basis of the Socialist Party collapse and the use of the Le Pen vote as a scarecrow in a context of massive abstention in the two presidential rounds. His goal is not to be re-elected. It is to destroy as many social gain, gains as possible by the end of his term. Apart from fiscal measures and liberalization of the labor market, Macron's main, main game lies in the validation of labor law inside anti war law, stemming from Hollande presidency. Social resistance. Even before the launch of his pension law project, he had to face the uprising of Yellow Vest, 
we, which express the setting in motion of the employers of the society escaping from uh, the forms of traditional organizations of the workers' movement. This expressed the feelings of section of population who can't no longer live decently in a context where there is no massive adherence to liberal ideology. Then the movement against the retirement laws. Beginning in September with the RATP workers, so the uh, suburb in Paris, uh, with a 24 hours warning strike in September. Then the SNCF workers, who are the, the railway workers, also starting to, to move. They mobilize the wave of white, white cat strikes that surprised all observers. And thus was born the prospect of the strike called to become general on December 5. Facing the backlash that has risen, despite the length of the strike at the SNCF and the RATP, it is only because of the will of the union leaderships not to knowingly organized the general strike that the government was able to on hold, to hold on. And this is how the transport workers remained isolated apart from the national, the days of national action when the union leader, leader, leadership called for it. Um, next, the movement against the breakage of the public service. May, uh, ma mainly health and hospital and education. Apart from labor code, the right of unemployed, the right of pensioners, Macron's action is aimed at public services. Two key areas focus attention, education and health. In health, this is the continuation of cuts of beds, services, posts, the restructuring of hospital card. In education, it is neither, neither more nor less than breaking the teaching staff, even if it means dropping dozens of thousands of whole teachers to arrive and having no more collective resistance from a professional group attached to notions of public service and equal access for all, to culture and qualification. The rising wave of layoffs and business closing. This, this wave will hit Macron's plan to reduce the unemployment benefits, right? Hundreds, hundreds of thousands of people with their families will be placed in immediate survival conditions, food, housing, health, we can expect a stronger shock than when the yellow vest crisis started. Um, so uh, I, I didn't have time to develop a very, very, very long uh, place about the political perspective. But uh, in a summary, I would say uh, neither the traditional parties of the working class as the Socialist Party and the Communist Party as a solution, nor the France and Soumise of Mélenchon. This is one, one of our main divergence, differences with Raymond. Nor the significant group of organizations of the far left who, are, who have uh, the main default of this organization is to be uh, syndicalist, uh, not political. So the the, the the goal is to how to build a political perspective. First, we think that uh, there's a place for the battle for union independence from social uh, social partnership. Then the battle for the centralization of all social movement against Macron and his government, and the fight for building a democratic and therefore revolutionary representation of labor. Conclusion. The confinement peri period 
made it possible to freeze the social crisis and put society under cover. The government was able to take interventionist and authoritarian initiatives like bans on demonstration meetings, closing the access to unions, uh, unions office, faced with the carelessness of the government, which had not wanted wanted to anticipate such an epidemic danger, the heroism and professional consensus of health workers underline the antisocial and even inhuman nature, nature of that power, discredit, discrediting it a little more. Likewise, all essential workers have shown who has a useful role for society and who has a parasite in society. Now, the economic crisis revealed or initiated by the COVID health crisis will provoke a very strong social upheaval with the prospect of almost 70 hundreds jobs destroyed by the end of the year. The government is going to refuse to honor the promises to raise wages of hospital workers, and it will be the same in all sectors. The social crisis will start again. Let's, let us do everything so that it's centralized against the power to put it out of order. Thanks for your attention. All right, thank you, Olivier. Um, I'll ask now, Greg, if you're ready to come in now. Well, um, can you hear me? Yes. yes. I did actually send a message to you on uh, things saying, I don't think I should give an introduction. If I can speak later on in okay. the discussion, I, I will do. But okay. uh, it's a bit difficult here. Okay. Okay. Any, any comrades, any questions, any comments? I think the, uh, I, I, I'm not making a contribution, but just um, some of the comrades to think about. One of the, one of the um, features of the situation in France, and really it's a, a perhaps a source of uh, some tactical differences between the two comrades, or perhaps the three comrades we have here, um, is the question of um, which, where, what is going to be the arena for the struggle politically of the, of the struggle of the working class. We can see huge movements, trade union movements, and also huge movements of the um, unorganized, if you like, the, uh, the um, gilets jaunes, um, if that's the right way to describe them. But um, politically, there seems to be no clear voice. There seems to be no arena in which the workers are turning. It, the, the uh, Communist Party is now uh, very much, um, I suppose, a shadow of what it was in the, uh, in the, in the past. The Socialist Party, likewise, um, perhaps even more so, has uh, shrunk almost to invisibility, as far as I can see. And um, the, the vacuum has been maybe partially filled by this very strange party of Mélenchon, the uh, France Insoumise, um, and, um, of course, the comrades will have different opinions on uh, what role, how much of a future that has got, what is the perspective for that, uh, for that party. So, I mean, it would be interesting if the comrades would come in on that. But also, of course, it's the same problem in um, pretty well everywhere. You know, in, in the USA, we've got this huge movement, but so far, no political expression of that movement, or no no um, socialist expression of it. We, um, uh, you know, even in Britain, uh, it seemed the Labour Party was going to be the um, the expression of the of the move of the mood of the youth and of uh, the working class for change. And mm -hmm. now that is in doubt. Uh, I mean, we had that debate last week about to what extent the Labour Party will or can play that role. Uh, and whether there would be a, um, 
uh, you know, where a split is looming, as I think is inevitable sooner or later. Uh, Olivier has um, pointed out that the French Communist Party still has 30 to 50,000 activists, but very few uh, electoral positions, except for a few uh, local councillors. Um, uh, all right, I mean, i just ask Comrade, I mean, if the French Comrades would like to um, amplify that question, uh, their, their points about the question of the political expression, but also if other comrades would like to comment on that and perhaps how it relates to how the same issue relates to their own countries. So, uh, Finn. Uh, it's a question I want to ask uh, Raymond. Uh, I'm not sure if I heard him correctly, but Raymond referred to national sovereignty as being a significant issue in France. So, Firstly, in what ways or what issues is this question of national sovereignty being posed? What issues are causing it to come to centre stage? That's my first question. And secondly, sources have always been opposed to the emergence of national division and to questions of the resolution of national issues on a bourgeois basis. So firstly, what issues are causing national sovereignty to come to the fore? And secondly, what attitudes are the left wing adopting to the emergence of that question of national sovereignty? Now, I hope I heard Raymond correctly, and I hope yes, my sir. question is relevant to what he, what he said. Yes. I can try to say some words in French. <laughs> do you, do you uh, want to come in back now, Raymond? Uh, or maybe later, after, after some... Okay. I will take, I will not see that. Uh, Ed. You're muted, Ed. You have to I've, 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 I've got a question for the comrades in France. Um, I mean, I was reading today about the, um, the, the there's a movement in uh, Dijon of the Chechen population <laughs> Uh, uh, and it, I mean, I'm trying to work out um, what, because, you know, you have to take into account that the British media will always distort what's going on if it's anything to do with class struggle. Um, and it, there does seem that there's some resistance against racism on the part of the Chechen population. And that's tied up with some... Um, sort of resistance against police repression and things as well. I, I wonder if the comrades could give us a bit more real information on that, because I don't trust the British media at all when they're reporting it. Um, it, if I can, um, it, it it was, I think it was a provocation from the police. So there, there was a conflict between uh, traffic, be, between dealers about uh, drugs and some stuff like that. And uh, a contingent of uh, 150 people of uh, Chechen mafia uh, make, made a raid on a, on places uh, habited by uh, <clears throat> Arab workers, uh, North African workers. And uh, this lasts during three days. Uh, if the first day uh, is the day one, the, the police was overwhelmed, okay? But it, it lasts three days and uh, the police uh, had helicopters surrounding the the heroes, and there were uh, excuse me, my internet is uh, so the police had the had the meaning to control the situation, but they let do it in order to provoke uh, riots. Uh, with uh, uh, inter-communitary clashes, and it was uh, it was a pure provocation 
from the the high the high level of the police ministry uh, a few days before on the sunday on the saturday 13 uh there there were a big demonstration in paris uh, about uh, against racism and against uh, police violence against uh, immigrate immigration people uh, and yeah, girls people from the, the immigration and uh, it was all was organized by the police to have a riot and the provocation collapsed and I think it was the next step to organize the provocation to to, to and uh, have a look at uh, the last the last paper we we show this afternoon on our website we are developing the the matters of, about the place of repression and of provocation from the power okay et peut-être dire quelques mots sur les premiers points. Je, je suis plus ou moins d'accord avec ce que vient de dire euh, euh, la description qu'a faite Olivier, mais je ne pense pas que ça fasse beaucoup de débat euh, en, entre nous. Sur la question de la souveraineté. Sur la question de la souveraineté. Le problème, c'est que dans le cadre de l'Union européenne, In the of the Union, toutes les revendications se heurtent every, à la question de la souveraineté. Parce que euh, le gouvernement est soumis, on est soumis euh, aux directives de l'Union européenne, on est soumis But, aussi à la politique de l'euro et de la Banque centrale européenne. So, so because the government, the government is always, um, uh, it's got, it's got to concede to the European Central Bank and the and the EU, the the the, the policies of the EU. Donc, je vais pas, je vais pas développer uh, plus longtemps, mais c'est c'est une question, uh, c'est une question uh, qui se, uh, c'est pour uh, uh, répondre un petit peu à Finn, uh, ça ça se pose. Sur, la Grande-Bretagne, le cas est un petit peu différent puisque la Grande-Bretagne a, a gardé sa monnaie tout le temps. Donc, so, so, le UK est un peu différent parce que le UK contrôle sa propre monnaie, mais c'est différent en France. Et donc, euh, en fait, on ne peut pas mener de politique progressiste euh, si euh, on ne. Euh, je veux dire, le minimum, c'est de rediscuter les relations avec l'Europe. C'est le, mini, le minimum. Je le dis, je le dis gentiment. Okay, so it's impossible to um, pursue a sort of independent policy for redistribution of wealth if you're tied to the currency. Donc, euh, et ça, tout le monde a bien, tout le monde est conscient de, de ce, enfin, tout le monde, beaucoup de gens sont conscients de ce problème-là. Uh, many, many people are aware of that fact. Euh, après, sur la question de, euh, sur la question de du débouché politique, aujourd'hui, il um, n'y a pas, il a pas de débouché de, de représentation politique de, 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 de mouvement. At, at the moment, there's no um, sort of open expression, the, no open political expression ouais. of the movement that's going on. Parce que le Parti communiste est le, euh, et, et il est fini. The party, communist party is finished. Le Parti Socialiste, il est uh, très, très, très bas. Il est à 6%. Uh, uh, the, the, the Socialist Party has fallen to a very, very low point. It got 6%. Et la France Insoumise, elle est en crise. And, and France Insoumise is in crisis. Parce qu'elle avait uh, uh, deux choix uh, uh, qui étaient soit une ligne, ce qu'elle avait développé à l'élection présidentielle, une ligne qu'on a appelé une ligne populiste d'opposition à, à, à l'oligarchie. Ça, c'est la première Parce que, sur le côté, il y a sort of option de développer une populiste ligne pour développer um, l'opposition à l'oligarchie. Et euh, l'autre option, c'est l'union de la gauche. Et l'autre option, c'est um, l'unité. 
Et aujourd'hui, euh, ils hésitent beaucoup. Euh, ils ont fait des concessions à la problématique de l'union de la gauche. Euh, uh, and, and, and at the moment, they're, they're, they're that they are in developing left unity. Et, euh, et donc, ils se sont retrouvés à 6% à l'élection aux, aux européennes. Euh... And, and, and Alors, quand, quand, là, je l'ai présenté sous une forme de, 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 de dans des termes de, de parti politique, mais si on, si on traduit ça en termes de classe sociale, euh, euh, ils, 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 ils hésitent entre s'adresser euh, aux masses du peuple, c'est-à-dire principalement à la classe ouvrière, et puis s'adresser à, à la petite bourgeoisie urbaine des centres-villes. So, if you relate that to um, social class, um, uh, vraiment, je, I would je... try in English. They, 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 they hesitate between two, two strategies. The, the first one, it's to To, to orient toward the, 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 the mass of the, 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 the French people, that's mean the, mainly the working class and so on. And, and the other strategy is to orient it toward uh, the, the pretty bourgeoisie of the, the big cities, you know, that means uh, the middle class of the big cities. It's, it's, it's like in Britain you, you, with the debate on the, the, the strategy of the Labour Party, who lose. The, the working class areas to win the center of the, the big uh, the big city it's, it, cities it's the same uh, the, the, the same issue and at this at this stage they not uh, the truth is not is not clear okay. and, and and most of the people who, who defend the the let's say the, the populist uh, strategy uh, 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 left the France Insoumise or, or were, uh, have been banned from, from, the, from the, expelled from the France Insoumise, even in the top leadership. What? And, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, uh, so, you have also other expressions, uh, but through newspaper, through clubs, through uh, uh, think tank, uh, uh, around, the, uh, around the idea of uh, Of uh, uh, defend the welfare state, uh, defend the French sovereignty, uh, and so and so, and sometimes with the idea of alliance between left and right to defend the, the society. So it, it, it exists also. So it's it's very confused at at this stage, but uh, so we 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 try to defend some ideas, but. Uh, um, I don't know what we, what we will do during the, the two, two coming years in terms of, of political uh, strategy. Okay. Uh, I've got there's four people indicated that I want to speak. Uh, Paniotis and Thermos from Cyprus, John from USA and Greg. Uh, it might be an idea if Greg came in first. Is that okay with the comrades? Okay, Greg, first. Okay, um, can you hear me? Yep. Um, uh, the question Roger asked about what would be the arena of, you know, the political a political expression or an organizational expression for a mass movement of the French workers. Um, I think the situation is very different to what existed in the past. If you think back to the time, for instance, of the 1968 revolution, it was clear that the Communist Party and the CGT, although they weren't the only organizations around, were overwhelmingly the organizational backbone of the uh, labor movement at the time. It was quite clear that the policy of the PCF and the CGT would have a decisive influence and Uh, on the outcome of events, and as it happens, a very negative influence on the outcome of events, because they were basically the, the framework of the French working class movement. Um, but now uh, the situation is very different, um, partly because of the political mistakes and this kind of, you know, the bankruptcy of reformism, 
of the Communist Party and of the CGT. That's part of the problem. The other part of the problem is, of course, mass unemployment, uh, casual labor contracts, uh, the breaking up of the great industrial centers, which were the, the sort of uh, main pillars of trade union organization in the past. You know, the heavy industries like uh, steel and coal and so on have, usually, have disappeared almost completely completely in the case of coal. So the many factors have meant that there's been a weakening of the position of those organizations within society and within the working class. So we're in a, a situation now which um, means that uh, if the question is posed or which organization would be the arena in which through which the working class would move in the course of a uh, a major struggle against capitalism. I think the fact is that there's no um, ready-made instrument in existence at the present time. Not, none of the existing organizations could really claim to play that role. Even the CGT, which is still a massively powerful organization in spite of its you know, weakening in relation to the past, it's still, if you go on any demonstration, mass demonstration in France, it's the CGT is the overwhelming component of that, uh, of those demonstrations. And in the recent strikes, it's been clear again that the CGT is, again, the most powerful uh, organization uh, around. But even that, even if the CGT was two or three times stronger than it is now, no trade union organization can really embrace the kind of masses that move into an action in a decisive struggle uh, against capitalism because of the way trade unions are organized on a workplace basis and so on. Whereas you need an organizational structure which could embrace broad masses of society beyond the limits of uh, trade union structures. So what I think will happen is that, uh, of course, the workers will create uh, an instrument of struggle, an organizational framework um, through, I don't know exactly how, but you know, some uh, form of uh, ge general assemblies, workers committees or strike committees or whatever, linking up the different sections of society involved in the struggle. And the, in that broad framework of you know, uh, popular organization, um, you know, a sort of a modern equivalent of uh, <coughs> the, the Soviet movement. The existing organizations will be a component part of that. So within that overall movement, you will have uh, the Communist Party and its influence. You will have the CGT, which would be a very significant component. And, you know, other tendencies, uh, the various left-wing groups and you know, if it still exists at that time, uh, France Insoumise, uh, I suppose. Um, and so basically, what I think we need to do at the present stage is be somewhere within those organizations. It doesn't really matter. It's not of decisive importance, in my opinion, which one of those organizations you're involved in. But you should be involved in one of the major organizations political organizations of uh, the movement at the present time so that when things do take off you have a voice if you're outside of all the of the CGT or the Communist Party or France Insoumise then there's you know you would just be like a, a cork on the ocean basically when things really pick up so you know historically um we, um, we, we concentrate on the CGT and the Communist Party. Now, it's true the Communist Party is a lot, lot weaker than it used to be, again, for political reasons, but also for sociological and sort of economic reasons. But um, I don't think we should overdo it. It's still an organization. Um, I mean, its real membership is always subject to some discussion, but its, real, its membership is probably between 40 and 50,000 members. Uh, in the last internal vote they had, there was something like 34,000 members voted. So it's still uh, 
overwhelmingly the biggest political organization in French society. In fact, it's the most numerous political party in French society of any party, and certainly on the left, by far the biggest, and still has, uh, although the links have been somewhat distended, very important links uh, within the CGT. And uh, most of the uh, departmental leadership bodies of the CGT are still very largely composed of people who are either members of the Communist Party or close to the Communist Party or sort of identify with the Communist Party in some way. So, you know, uh, we need to um, have a balanced approach towards the weakening of the, of the CP and not sort of um, write it off too easily, I think. So that is what I would say. The arena will be created and the existing organizations, none of which could uh, really pretend to play a sort of overall leading role, um, will be component elements within that broad movement. And then, of course, it'll be a struggle for whose program, whose leadership wins out in the course of the struggle. Just one other point I wanted to deal with, this question of, um, oh, by the way, France Saint-Soumise is a curious organization, but politically, really speaking, if you kind of leave out the details and the kind of peculiar idiosyncrasies uh, of Mélenchon and his leading group, basically what France Saint-Soumise is, it's a continuation of the old socialist party, I'm talking in political terms, in, in terms of its program, before it moved to the left. That is to say, it, you could, you know, it's really, it's just like picking up the thread of Mitterrandism uh, up until, let's say, 1982, when the policy of the socialist government uh, at that time turned around and adopted an austerity policy. Uh, if he had to be make a difference between the two, uh, actually Mélenchon's program is to the right of Mitterrand's program in 1981, for in, in terms of nationalization, in terms, in many respects, uh, it's, it's more, it's, it's a more moderate program if you strip away all the kind of florid language and kind of, uh, I mean, he's a very effective speaker, Mélenchon, but if you strip it down, his program to what it actually says, it's no more left-wing than I think stands to the right to Mitterrand's program at the time he was elected in 1981. So it's a sort of picking up of that historical thread of left thread of left social democracy. That's what uh, France Insoumise is. One of the other differences, it's a far more undemocratic structure than the Socialist Party ever was um, because there are no real formal internal mechanisms through which the rank and file can... Uh, uh, impose their point of view on or you know or determine the composition of the leading bodies of uh, France and Soumise. So just that was like just a, a passing comment really on France and Soumise but on this question of national sovereignty now uh, this is not a progressive demand. Now, the, the, the popularity of national sovereignty which is very popular of course on the extreme right but not only on the extreme right the reason why Figures like Mélenchon and figures like the leaders of the Communist Party also, there's a kind of a nationalistic, sovereignist uh, um, uh, thread to their propaganda. Is because um, it's partly because of a, gen a general reaction in society to, um, how can I put this, to capitalist internationalism or what, what people call globalization. In other words, you've got um, the, uh, here she's woken up now. Come and sit on my lap. Sarah, <laughs> baby. Um, you've got globalization where you've had, uh, you know, mass unemployment in the advanced countries, the European Union, which held out a lot of promise to people there would be growth, there would be stability, there would be uh, social progress, economic progress. None of that has materialized, quite the opposite. Mass unemployment, a huge uh, tendency to the uh, precarity, you know, so it's casualization of labor contracts and so on. A lot of uncertainty, a feeling of, of being, everybody being brought down. 
and you know going a rung lower down on the ladder all the time and a lot of workers will say well um uh, first of all who can defend us well the labor movement has failed to defend them i mean in spite of all the protests and demonstrations it hasn't stopped this backsliding um it seems that the economy is open to the four winds of international competition, products coming in from abroad, you know, international trade, uh, no rules on the frontiers, um, uh, influx of labor from other countries, not only in Europe, but from all over the world. And just the general feeling among a lot of people that things are out of control. Who is under, who can control this situation? Who can let, and there's this feeling that we need to get things back to sort of smaller units like get, give the state and the government and the law more control over our lives in our own country. And this is not just about France. I mean, Brexit is basically that. It's a nationalistic reflex to uh, the, um, let's say, the, the influence of uh, international, the internationalization of the economy and of society. And the idea that if we were just on our own, then surely we would be better off. Um, so it's it's nationalism actually this demand for national sovereignty and the idea which that you know you can't couldn't apply a left-wing policy as long as the european union is there is absolute nonsense i mean even before the european union um there was international capitalism we always know that we couldn't have socialism in a single country if there was an attempt at uh, widespread you know, massive social reform or even revolution in France it would spell the end of the European Union anyway um, but you don't have to leave the European Union before you can start that that is uh, clearly wrong and uh, I'm not in favor of the European Union but I'm not in favor of uh, a sort of capitalist separation from the European Union because I just don't think it's a, it's a solution. It will happen in the course of the movement. But uh, the idea that if France was no longer, if the European Union no longer existed or if France left the, the European Union, that anyone would be better off is, uh, is nonsense. And uh, the British will, if they haven't already realized it, will soon realize that it won't do any good to the labor movement. And in no way does it improve the position of the British working class. So, you know, I, I don't stand for national sovereignty. I stand for internationalism and class struggle against the ruling class in France and internationally. And it's not a question of national sovereignty, but of which class is sovereign within the nation. That is the question. And uh, you can have as much national sovereignty as you like, but as long as the capitalist class is still in power, the people will not be sovereign. And um, so that is the way I look at that question. But I've, what I've tried to say is that the reasons why there's that nationalistic reflex is basically a uh, kicking back against, uh, you know, all the austerity and the kind of general fragilization of, um, of working class life which mean that uh, since there's no revolutionary alternative, no one's talking about socialism or not in any clear way, then uh, basically if it's not socialism, then what can it be? Uh, who's going to protect us? Well, the state, the nation. Um, basically, if you look in history or modern history anyway, there's only two forms of social consciousness really uh, that are worth talking about. That's class consciousness and national consciousness. And if, you, if there's no class consciousness, if there's no class struggle, if there's no issue, uh, outcome to the class struggle, then people fall back on ideas of national identity, national pride, uh, and so on and so forth. And, you know, uh, it's a struggle for jobs. It's a struggle for housing. It's a struggle for social security. It's a struggle for hospital beds, for places in schools. And this is not enough for everybody then there should be a priority given to the nationals over the foreigners. That's basically what it amounts to. Okay, thanks, Greg. <coughs> um, Paddy Otis, you're next. Sorry, you've had to wait a long time, but I thought it's you know, a very useful contribution so far. Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, <coughs> actually, um, 
the questions, the points I wanted to make were covered to a large extent by Greg in, in a very nice way, but I'll put them uh, out anyway. <clears throat> the first one is this issue of uh, uh, exit from the European Union, uh, uh, national sovereignty and so on. Uh, as Greg said, uh, I don't think that's a, a progressive uh, step. Uh, it's not only in France that this issue has been relevant. Uh, it has also been discussed, for instance, in Greece during the crisis. Um, but I think it leads uh, nowhere. Uh, not only does it have these affinities with uh, the extreme right, uh, but as Greg rightly said, uh, it's the class issue which is, is, the, is the most important. And uh, if the EU, EU is dissolved, uh, broken apart and so on, uh, that doesn't mean uh, automatically that there will be better conditions for uh, social advance uh, in the countries of Europe. So the, the alternative is that of internationalism and in a European context, it's uh, the demand and the fight for what might be called a radical federation. Uh, so we have to fight together with the rest of the countries uh, in Europe, not uh, apart from them. Uh, so that's the one issue. Uh, the other is uh, the question of political strategy. Uh, again, this was covered by Greg uh, to a large extent. Uh, my question is uh, what, uh, what view the comrades in France have of, uh, of a political strategy? Uh, I mean, uh, is the, the capture of political power one of the objectives in, in the long run? And uh, if, uh, if that is the case, then uh, the various struggles, the various organizations I think they, sh they should have a vision of uh, coming together at some stage uh, with a radical program. And so they should be working towards, firstly, political unity. Uh, secondly, the, the struggle for, po for political power. And thirdly, uh, working uh, along with the localized and the various struggles taking place of an overall alternative economic strategy, let's say, uh, something which perhaps Roger is very well aware was uh, uh, a very important issue in Britain during the 1970s and early 80s with uh, Tony Benn uh, being on the ascendancy and the uh, the labor left being uh, fairly strong at that uh, stage. So, uh, so the issue of political strategy should be seen at various levels, uh, class struggle at the local level, uh, political unity and the radical economic and social program. Thanks very much. Thank you, Paniotis. Um, Thanos? Well, I don't know much about France, except for the fact that uh, we are uh, watching there what we are watching in, in many countries in the world, an extreme instability with a government that is not sure of how, what they are, uh, how, how, how strong they, they stand on their feet. And there is a movement that is going on for a long, long time now. Uh, well, most of my questions are, are not needed after Greg's um, uh, uh, intervention, and uh, I'm not going to, to deal with, with, with what uh, satisfied me from there. And uh, although I have some sort of uh, 
um, uh, doubts about the, uh, some of the things that uh, Craig said. It's it's not they are not these doubts are not important. The issues are there, and it's clear to me now that um, it's more clear to me now than it was before. Uh, Craig's intervention. One thing, though, I would like to put down as a question: there is a, a strong movement going on, and it's a spontaneous movement coming up. Uh, Gilets jaunes, the, the strikes, the, uh, the struggle against Macron's uh, uh, laws and policies, uh, and, and in all this time, I'm sure that there must have been some embryonic uh, structures uh, being built uh, in, the, in this mobilization. Do we have a, a picture of what's going on there and how these structures are developing? Because uh, it's probably uh, there that will be uh, uh, the, the key to, uh, to what is going to happen next. And, uh, uh, do we have? Do, are we in touch with uh, with this movement? It's a, and the, are there uh, uh, the, the political organizations uh, involved in this, or are they, they just uh, uh, unable to uh, to tune in with this movement? Mm -hmm. Okay, colleague. Um, I've got Olivier. You've got your hand up. Uh, is there anybody who wants to speak? Uh, wants to ask a question for Olivier, maybe, but he can take up. Um, okay. Go on. Yes, I would like to to speak about uh, the nature of the political project in France Uh All is uh, about. Uh, who is Mélenchon and uh, where he is going? Uh, Mélenchon is a talented and experimented uh, politician. He's some kind of synthesis of uh, uh, Mitterrand, Georges Marché, Fidel Castro, Pierre Lambert, and <laughs> so much. He is able to speak uh, the different lines at the same time. Uh, at the fundamental core is uh, a social democrat, a reformist, and a legalist. And uh, with France and Sumiz, the project is to destroy uh, the traditional parts of the working class uh, as uh, uh, the Socialist Party and the Communist Party. And uh, the populist, uh, the populist, uh, populist uh, nature of his project is, uh, is not democratic is to to forbidden to workers to have a party to have organizations and uh, the 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 way of functionment of the France and Soumis is uh, all power to the center no power to the local to the bases and um, that's a big problem because uh, uh, you can't you can't have any democratic functionment, any democratic decision it, in such a, uh, a cadre. So uh, we see we see France Insoumise as a very very negative, very dreadful uh, political project. Thanks. Thank you. Um, David, do you want to speak now? Uh, well. Yeah, some questions you'll see I've raised. Uh, first of all, could I apologize for my lack of uh, linguistic ability? When we think of the debates which took place, you know, in the uh, third international, even maybe in the fourth international, we were a little 
uh, you know, the participants were a little more fluent in, in French and maybe in German too. So I apologize for, you know, not being able to follow all the discussion quite as I wanted, despite, I mean, some very good attempts uh, from our translators. Uh, look, the big question, um, I see that for all the peculiarities of the French situation, uh, we, we have some certain uh, common tendencies. First of all, you know, we, we see the mobilization out in the streets uh, not being reflected in the political formations. In fact, a real stultification, a, almost a paralysis in the politics of the superstructure. Uh, while there is immense turb turbulence, you know, from below. I've raised some question about whether we're seeing a variety of movements at the moment, uh, which are converging at times and diverging at others. I mean, we've been following very closely the LFS in the past, and now we see, you know, it's not been mentioned, uh, I, unless I've missed it, uh, but the Black Lives Matter, you know, mobilization in, in a number of cities in France uh, you know, has been quite uh, quite dramatic. And that, I would imagine, cuts across this idea, sorry, the second point, which I was going to make uh, or, or emphasize, was this interest, reinterest in the national state and uh, the way in which, you know, right and left are going back to the old dirigist. I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it, but anyway, the emphasis on the state is the solution to a problem rather than regional or international uh, views or international views. Um, and that is a common factor, which I, you know, we, we've got Brexit as well. We, you know, we've got these different, the rise of the national state once, uh, you know, seemed to be entirely uh, eclipsed by globalization is, is, is becoming rampant. I wouldn't say rampant may be too strong, but it's certainly having a revival. Um, and uh, anti-globalization has got its uh, reactionary side as well as, 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 you know, some some other truths. So, you know, the but the main contradiction, I think, in terms of our work uh, on the left, you know, is how to get the political, well, how to how to organize politically, um, you know, from the streets, the workplaces, and elsewhere, and to give that the political expression at once. It seems the left is incapable of, of uniting uh, to be able to give a formal expression of that. I mean, among ourselves and among others who are, you know, sort of say permanent strugglers. Um, and, you know, how do we carry that forward? I mean, in, in the different existing political formations, which seem to atrophy at the same time they don't go away. And although we might ex uh, expect to see a development as in, in Spain and in Greece, and elsewhere of new political formations, actually it doesn't seem to be taking place. Anyway, I've made some points and I'd be interested to hear some response. <clears throat> Ma 